check out the entire show. Just hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on odds.com. Let's do it. We start with a 12 p.m. Eastern big, big game. Ooh, we we have number three Iowa Hawkeyes, six and zero on the season. First, number one Gonzaga Bulldogs, three and zero in the season. We're in Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Fall, South Dakota. This is a beauty here. We're gonna shop at three different books because all again, as you guys know who've been following us, uh, our experts have to deal with the legal licensed American books and. They're not all out with their lines yet, but we have FanDuel and Circa that we will be using for this show. So with FanDuel right now, they've just moved the line. Gonzaga is now down to two and a half. It did open at three and a half, even four at some books. It's now at two and a half, and that comes with juice. It comes with minus 120 juice. One thing that John has done a nice job of early in the season here on the show is kept his juice down. He's an average line of minus 106. This is minus 120. This total is at 170 and a half. Let's start with Iowa. They'd be nothing short of dominant this year. All six of their games are being played at home. They're, they were last in action on Sunday when they defeated Northern Illinois 106 53. They shot 56.2% from the field. They only turned the ball over eight times. Star Luca Garza needed only 20 minutes to go for 23 points and eight rebounds. Garza and Joe Weiskamp combined to go 17 of 23 from the field. That includes 14 of 16 from two. But Garza, he's not just – I mean, he can go outside the arc and look spectacular. He's averaging 29.2 points per game, nine rebounds in just 25 minutes per game. He's shooting 69.1% from the field and 68.4% from three. Iowa scores 100.5 points per game, allows just 68.5 points per game, giving them an average margin of victory of 32 points. They shoot 51% from the field. They get 24 assists per game. Talk about distribution. Then we get to Gonzaga. On the night of December 6th, Gonzaga had to stop all basketball activities until December 14th due to a positive COVID case. They have had, at most, four days of practice to tune up for this big game. Gonzaga started out the season 3-0. Impressive wins over number 7 Kansas, then number 7 Kansas 102-90, Auburn 90-67, and then number 11 West Virginia 87-82. Drew Timmy 23.3 points per game, 6.3 rebounds. Corey Kispert 22.3 points per game. Jalen Suggs 13.3 points per game, 6.3 assists per game. Gonzaga has faced much tougher a much tougher group of teams than Iowa. They're averaging 93 points per game while allowing 79.7. They shoot 55.3% from the field. A marquee matchup, John Ryan, Iowa Hawkeyes, Gonzaga Bulldogs. Take it away. Well, I think as we move on in our shows, Jim, you'll, you'll know that when there's a Big Ten team involved in one of these picks, it's it's more than likely going to be the Big Ten team. And um, what I found to be a very useful metric, uh, and anybody can follow it, is the assist-to-turnover ratio. And that uh, – it, it tells you how well a team is taking care of the basketball, uh, how well they're passing it, how well they're distributing it to their teammates. How we talk about unselfish play in the NBA, which hardly exists anymore. Uh, but at the college level, it does it, it does exist. The unselfish play of Iowa, and it's it's um, it, it runs rampant in the Big Ten, if that's the right word. Most the majority of Big Ten schools. Uh, play an unselfish style of basketball. Illinois is another example of it. Uh, the Big East is another conference that I really study hard uh, because those are the teams that have the fundamentals. They have the best coaching. Um, and the, and it, it's more than coaching. It's teaching the players uh, what the fundamentals are that they didn't learn in, in high school or how to get them to the next level. And I'm not putting any, you know, um, downgrade or mockery on Gonzaga. I mean, they're, they're a tremendous team now, and they, you know, it's a shame they don't play in a different conference. I, I often wondered, you know, if they played uh, even in the Pac-12, um, that that would help them when it comes time for tournament time. Uh, but, you know, their head coach is awesome in his own right because he always seems to have that team ready to play, uh, despite what the media says every year about them not playing anybody in their conference and they're not ready for it. They haven't faced any formidable foe. Um, but we'll see that in this, this matchup here for sure. So in, in Iowa's case, 
they are number two in the nation in assist to turnover ratio with a 2.571, which is insane. That means you're committing or you're you're um, creating two and a half assists for every turnover. So if you, you know, average college basketball team commits 15 turnovers, that means that you would have to have uh, 37 assists to be where Iowa is right now. So not only are they distributing the ball well, they're also not turning it over. Uh, they rank number one in the country in assists with 24 a game. Um, Gonzaga does a good job too. They're 10th, but a distant 19th. They're 29th with a 1.42 assist to turnover, which is more than one full point below where Iowa is. And and this is where rankings kind of get uh, warped a little bit. You know, you have number two against number 29, number one against number 10. You think, well, that's pretty even, but it's really not. Uh, I think Iowa's playing at a, at a level that I haven't seen in, in a long, long time. And um, the only negative I've seen, but it's offset by how well Garza's playing, is that they have three players in double digits. And I'm sure the coaching staff will look to get four and five and six players in double digits as the season wears on. Uh, so I'm I'm all over Iowa in this game. All over Iowa. Wow. Yep. I'm not surprised the line moved down either, Jimmy. I think the the sharps right away came in at, at you said it opened at three and a half, right? Oh, uh, they were fours. They were even fours. Yeah, they they hammered that right away out of the shoot. I'm not surprised by that at all. Um, you know, if this would get below, uh, you know, into that two range, then the money line becomes a, a better play. Um, you know, with no fans in the stands, and we talked about this in football and the NBA. Uh, we saw higher scoring, and it's because there's no noise, and road teams now can change plays, they can communicate better, and they execute better. Uh, so I, I did a little math, and it, and it turns out that whenever in football or basketball, if you get below that three level, uh, it becomes prudent uh, to bet the money line, and that would apply to over the course of the season. Yeah, uh, I agree. Absolutely agree. Uh, you have a – Tricky decision to make here, unless you want to go the money line route, which I would completely understand if you do. You have a tricky decision to make.